on 6 June 2022 I published this circuit about and video about a sloppy one transistor oscillator and how to make such a sloppy one transistor oscillator and the idea was that this is a circuit that almost always works and that's really true. I made another circuit today on the basis of this first ID and it's here. Uh, you see all these crocodile clips, they are only there to um, uh, co make connections to the TL tube, the meter, etc, uh, etc, et the scope, the counter, etc. Uh, this was the, early, the first uh, video, I will give a uh, link in the text box. And now I made this circuit and with this circuit I have uh, made a circuit where I bring this transformer and that's normally a transformer made for um, 230 volts, approximately 5 watts on the primary, 12 volt on the secondary and when you do the, uh, the DC, DC measurements, you see it's 2 ohms here and 516 ohms here. That is not critical and that's what I wanted to tell. Uh, the circuit that I showed earlier is more or less universal. Uh, it works more or less always and important to tell that with such a circuit we make that uh, this uh, trans uh, transformer uh, works on its self resonance. So it's part of a resonance circuit and there are more elements in that resonance circuit um, that attribute to the frequency where it all works and uh, these different uh, other parameters to make the circuit oscillate are the at first the transformer, its properties, how the core was made, uh, when you use for instance here a primary made for say uh, a primary made for 110 volts and the secondary made for say 18 volts, the circuit can oscillate on an other frequency. That frequency has also to, to do with the used transistors but the most basic uh, element that sets the frequency, the usable frequency, is the transformer. And I want to give a demonstration uh, especially about this capacitor that also plays a big role in the um, resonance frequency, where it all resonates and, that's very important, where that transformer performs on its maximum. When this transformer does not perform on its maximum, uh, say uh, the best resonance frequency to get the highest uh, AC output, uh, you will find here for instance a 50 volts or so, but with an, on an other frequency, that this can be for instance 200 volts. That's what I want to demonstrate now. Also important, I don't want to forget that, uh, is the supply voltage. Also very important for the frequency where it works and also for the efficiency of the circuit. So I switch in now the more or less uh, ideal frequency where it was made for and it starts. Well, that took a too long time. Try it again. Oh well, I know why it is. Has to do with... Sorry! has everything to do uh, with the fact that I did not connect here the minus so the minus to the circuit came 
from the main supply and the minus of the um, counter and the scope. That's the reason why this oscillator uh, didn't want to start so very quick anyway. Now I do it again. The minus is properly connected. Well, now it starts more or less quick. We, we are on approximately uh, 11 volts. The whole circuit takes one ampere. The waveform is this. It's quite good. And the uh, frequency is 3.6 kilohertz. Kilo cycles. And you can surely hear on the background how this transformer is beeping. It also means that uh, when the transformer that was originally made to work on 50 Hz now works on uh, say 3.6 kHz that it can get hotter, more hot uh, compared to the use on the frequency where it was made for. Anyway, so this is again the whole circuit. I've used now a Darlington. I, the Darlington consists of a BD139 and the 2 and 3055. Pin connections are here. Um, and of course, the transformer is made into self resonance. That means that we have to couple back a signal out of the output to the input, the phase must be correct. That means that um, uh, it could be, to make it oscillate, that the A and B have to be reversed and I will tell uh, how that works. I've used here an arrow by purpose. This means what uh, it is to uh, reverse A and B. So this is the first situation. The TL tube is connected between A and B. B is on the minus and here is the second situation. Here A is on the minus and the B goes via that CX, that coupling capacitor, to the Darlington. So not to the, the, the one transistor but to the Darlington. That's here. This is the Darlington. It seems complicated, but in practice it's extremely simple. So, back to the circuit again. What I wanted to demonstrate is that this capacitor is crucial for success. It sets for a big part, apart from the properties of the complete circuit, uh, the transformer, etc., like I've told, it sets the frequency where this whole oscillating circuit and that transformer also works on its best properties. So with the biggest voltage out and that's approximately 200 volts that's here. I want to switch out more or less all the lights. You see here that teal tube it's connected to the secondary of that transformer it's uh, it gives out approximately 200 volts. The transformer is made for approximately 6 watts. Uh, this, this TL tube is by the way defective. That means that say the incandescent uh, filaments here are burnt out but you use it in this case as a kind of Geisler tube uh, for instance, look on the World Wide Web, Google it, Geisler tube, then you can see what happens here. Uh, there is a gas pillar here now inside that is ignite, ignited by the high voltage. And of course it's not very fierce, because uh, this is normally a 30 watt uh, TL tube, noble gas, lamp, but now it only works on say 5 watt or so. Most important thing is that this capacitor here is responsible for the frequency of the circuit. 
and this is the crocodile clip and I can use I've used now this uh, capacitor it's 3 and 3 so uh, 3300 picofarad but I can also go to 1 and 5 so this capacitor here 1 and 5 that means that the frequency goes up of course due to the lower um, capacitance and you can see perhaps that the light effect diminishes somewhat we see that it works on 4.7 kilohertz we see the waveform here go back to the other capacitor more light waveform is here 3.6 kilohertz so the whole complete unit the transformer the transistors and that capacitor resonate oscillate on 3.6 kilohertz with this waveform by the way very good waveform by the way I think uh, very good proper square wave so let's see what happens when we make this capacitor too high that means that the frequency goes down and you can surely hear on the background this transformer waveform it works on 660 Hertz that's not so much and of course you can get the whole thing to light up when we lift up the supply voltage but there's always a kind of critical balance between all the the issues uh, the properties of the circuits and what I mean when you lift up the voltage frequency goes up that's what I told now we are on 18 volt and we are on 2 ampere and that means that so there's still no light anyway we are on 1 kilohertz waveform still very good but no light that means that 1 kilohertz is not the right frequency to bring out all the best properties of this transformer so back to the capacitor that uh, worked best that's the 3 and 3 of course when you do experiments have another transformer here for instance a transformer uh, that gives out say 24 volts here sorry again made for to generate out of 110 volts AC or 230 volts AC a voltage of 24 volts and that's this winding here this is the low voltage winding so we have a reverse transformer uh, anyway uh, I think it's completely clear when you uh, know a little bit about how transformers work etc etc but in this I w wanted to tell that in this in that case could be that the frequency differs and also perhaps there are transformers that work good with such a capacitor CX of 50 nanofarad anyway uh, this is how I made it important to tell you can also uh, give that transistor a, a proper bias here with a 1 mega ohm resistor problem is that, that when it oscillates the current is good but when the, there's no longer oscillation an enormous current starts to flow here and that's the reason why I've made in this circuit a 2 ohm resistor of 5 watts you can shortcut that when you use this setup because now we give the second transistor a forward voltage that means that when the oscillation stops uh, also the supply current stops I tested that out 
that was more or less important. Thanks for watching. Switch out the lights to see this beautiful TL tube light up. I hope it was a little bit clear when you want to make such a circuit. There's always that say nasty beep. And with a better transformer you can go to approximately 16 kilohertz or so or 20 kilohertz. And that's a frequency that the human ear in general uh, cannot uh, perceive. And there are of course transformers that work ideally on 16 kilohertz. For instance an old analog TV tube line transformer. Anyway, there are videos about it in my uh, on my YouTube channel and in my book. I mean schematics. Thanks for watching.